are bringing up. So once again, we have Sunset Shores and Tacticrew. I know it's been a minute since we said it. Uh, we don't know a ton about Tacticrew, I believe. No, no Sunset we know Shores. It's Sunset Shores. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, we have Quirk's Mark there on the Junior, which is what I would have expected. And it looks like we are just starting to open up into mid here. And uh, you know what? I was expecting the sloshing machine, and I was like, oh, who has the sloshing machine? No one. No one actually has one. We have two splash of Maddox, a 52 gal, um, but no machines to think uh, to speak of. Yeah. One thing I would like to point out here is that there is a scope D leader and an unscope D leader. The scope will have slightly more range, while the unscope will have way more mobility. So that's an interesting matchup. And remember that uh, that splatter scope, while it does give you a zoom, it does limit your field of vision when you scope in. Mm -hmm. So that's a bit of a disadvantage you have to play around for that range. Absolutely. We are seeing the Wave Breaker managing to get a fun little pick. Oh, actually, that was a spot bomb from the Junior that just looked like it was the Wave Breaker. Always fun. Uh, Junior's a very neat weapon, uh, one I've always been very fond of. It's The Big Bubbler is a great special for it. It allows it to be way more aggressive, I say, right as they go down. Oh, but speaking of Big Bubbler, one of the biggest weaknesses to that move is it's not frame one. It has a hefty startup to when it actually starts protecting you. And uh, we actually saw that going off there. Uh, uh, bomb getting through before the bubbler went down and the player going out. Oh, look at this wall play right now, coming from the Gal player right now. Trying to move on this Charger player. Oh, good pick. Thank the Splattershot player for being there. Yeah, we see the Splattershot here with a similar kit to the Kensa Splattershot in Splatoon 2 uh, with that Slot Bomb and Trizuka. Trizuka being different for missiles, but having a similar displacement effect. Oh, I think it's not missiles. <laughs> and also, uh, we haven't really talked about it, but Sunset Shores, who we know nothing about, is a Almost. They're just destroying. They they actually only just got stopped with a 70 point penalty. Well, that was such a strong play by them. I mean, I, I, we don't know who these people are, and I'm very impressed so far by their play. It's very possible that they could be returning Splatoon 1 players that I don't necessarily recognize and that they've put a lot of time into the game. Um, it would not surprise me if that's the case with how well they're playing. Uh, but maybe they're just brand new players coming to a land for the first time and just really making a good show happen. The E-Leader on the side of Tact Crew is also down again, which really limits their offensive power, but both E-Leaders are down. Crafting is already out from that splash, and that is two down on the side of Tact uh, on the side of Sunset Shores. Tact Crew has a huge advantage right now. To They're very close to winning 30 points remaining. And remember, that's faster than a second, so they're closely approaching this lead, and Sunset Shores is only just now getting back into it. Let's see who they can take out. Trizuka's firing shots. I don't think anyone went down there. Okay, one one player for each side. Tactic Crew did manage to get lead there, and that E-Leader getting another critical pick there. It is just the E-Leader up on the side of Sunset Shores. This could real. This game is going to go to Tactic Crew. Wow, and, and just like that too. There was just one break in the moment there, and they needed to get to get just enough paint down to cause the penalty to go up, but. Tact Crew held on and did a really amazing job there. But yeah, Sunset Shores, we know nothing about them, and they almost won that map in one push. Absolutely. And Dio, while they haven't played much recently, is a very strong player. Star Luigi's been around for a long time. I don't I don't know Pepe as well, but Swark is obviously a fantastic junior player. I remember seeing them in top 500 and X-Rank all the time. They were on Squid and Good. They're a notable junior player. Yeah, and, and you can tell. They, they clapped back pretty quick. They adjusted. <laughs> they went, wow, that was a really nice push. Good job. It's our turn. Mm -hmm. And they held that mid, and they pushed up nice, and they just they didn't let Sunset Shores reset. Absolutely. And by the time they reset, it came down to the wire, and mm -hmm. they just needed that zone. The tap shot kill that E-Leader managed to get was also very critical to that because, it, you know, you get tap shot by an E-Leader, you're going you're gonna to feel a little bad. You're not going to feel great <laughs> about yourself in that moment. No, nah, no one, no one wants to get tap shot. I mean, the only tap shot that's like acceptable, I think, bamboo. is the bamboo. Yeah, like, yeah. Like you get tap shot by a bamboo. You're like, or that, reflux. That's the job. Actually, reflux actually does 95 on tap shots if you aim it correctly. Yes. Um, which is reflux is an incredibly strong weapon. I don't expect to see it a ton tonight because people are still very much learning it. Um, but it is. Its kit is great. It does great damage. It can fight on its own. It can hold charge. I say this as somebody who prefers Tri-Stringer, um, but it's probably the better bow, just in terms of practical effects. And what, uh, it's uh, also one of the nicest things about both the Stringer and uh, the Reflux is going to that level one charge mm -hmm. and just tap, like, charging to special. level one. You get special quick, you paint a ton, you zone control super mm -hmm. well, and you can take people out so quick with Absolutely. the Reef. I mean, you said it, right? Like. You land yeah. two of those bolts, you've done 70-something, and yeah. then one tap will take them out. Like, exactly. They are charge weapons that can do midline better than other charge weapons, with the exception of Bamboo and Squiffer. And in theory, GooTuber, but GooTuber doesn't do its job very well. You. 
<laughs> you know, until you find that one good GooTuber player that makes you regret. Uh, I've known the good GooTuber players. Okay, it still enough. doesn't fit well in comp usually is more its issue. Uh, yeah. It can do well in solo queue, but it does not do well in competitive play. It doesn't fit any role well enough generally. And it's too easy to punish with its long charge time, especially now that it doesn't have main power up to give it damage up. It just gets a little too finicky generally. Yeah, that's something to remember for all of you watching at home. Turf War is one thing. Ranked is another thing. Tournament play. You're going to see a lot of set compositions and strong weapons and pairs that just people know work well. And <laughs> speaking Here's of, there's machine. the slashings. <laughs> yep, two of them coming out right now. And we are once again seeing scoped and unscoped from the chargers in the exact same way. It's the same charger that's scoped and it's the same charger that's unscoped, which it, is always neat. It's generally a preference. Like someone finds out like, oh, I really like the scope and, and they tend to stick to it or I don't like the scope and, and then they never use it. Absolutely. And we are seeing that machine trying to pull off that flank, not quite managing to charger, looking into mid. And we are seeing that both juniors just kind of painting, making sure they get this, their specials as bubbler is so, so strong on tower control as you can put the big bubbler, which provides uh, complete immunity to shots from the other team unless they get inside of it to your team. Yeah, I really like the patience from the splatter shot player. They're, they know how dangerous this mid is right now, and they're just holding an aggressive position, unfortunately getting picked. And that is two down on the side of Sunset Shores. It seems the tactic crew went, you almost won there, but we're going to push back a little bit harder this time. We see where you're at now, and we're going to put up a bigger fight. Bubbler coming out there from the junior. And a lot of great things happening. Oh my god, and that's so many people from Sunset Shores going down. I don't even know if you needed the bubbler. They, are, uh, they clear that checkpoint. Oh wait, yeah. no they don't. Yes they do, okay. <laughs> yeah, they do clear that checkpoint. And they have pushed all the way to 40 here. It is only like a minute into the game. And they got yet another pick, although they do go down to what I would guess to be a fizzy bomb from those angles. Um, Junior shooting at tower here, just trying to play a little bit defensively, playing safe as juniors tend to do, and pushing into this right side to try and find a little bit more paint for their teammates to get in more easily, and managing to get a great bomb pick. Bomb picks are always so critical in Splatoon because they just allow you a free way in. Yeah, look at this movement right now, pushing up into the front lines, trying to hold this bubbler. There's going to be a really good place to pop it. Finally getting some score on the board. Sunset Shores, look at this junior player coming in right now, trying to find opening. Unfortunately, is going to go down with the bubbler, but did find that pick for their team, of course. Tax crew getting control of the tower, not letting them get too much started there. Absolutely. We did see Sunset Shores Charger there using uh, Vacuum, which allows you to prevent other enemy teams from painting you. It, eats, it takes care of a lot of specials. Cool. Although, that being said, that was an incredible uh, tri-strike out of that splatter shot, and we are seeing another one coming out here. Pepe's first land, getting two kills with that uh, Trizuka. Great aim, great awareness. That's a great way to start things off. You should feel feel pretty good about that. Absolutely. And we are seeing this machine here just throwing fizzies, and there's that vacuum back at it again, just showing how strong it can be, and oh just God. the fact that it completely denies the ability to challenge tower along with that bubbler. This is an absolute death match happening on the tower right now. <laughs> Sunset Shorts does get control of it, though. Wow, that was that was one heck of a play, but they're going to hold on a little bit longer. Two minutes and 33 left. We've seen comebacks from crazy. And that oh is my two God. down to that tri strike, showing so, off the fact that it can arc so, so well in those situations. Did it, was that a two for one? It was a two for one. <laughs> we are here to be about coming out here from the machine. I did almost say against the machine, but that does not exist right now. <laughs> right now, we have a splash shot player on the flank, holding some zone. In, they're going to look for that opening. They're going to try to frag out. Get some spots on the board. Another Trizuka trying to stop that bubble. The bubble is so useful. The fact that it can go with the tower is, is a little crazy. Yeah, I did not expect that when it was announced. I'm going to be quite honest. I fully expected it to not move to the tower. Although that Booyah Bomb will absolutely shred it and manages to take out the Charger too. And they managed to get a pick on the other machine. Although the Splatter Shot moves in on them, manages to take them out. And they managed to cancel that jump. So they get a lot of mid control back off of it. Yeah, a lot of mid control. They're going to be able to move back in and yet do exactly this, be able to stop that push and have another attempt at that checkpoint that is barring them from get, uh, getting a lead. One minute and 33, again, plenty of time to work with here. We're back on the splatter shot. Trying to cover this flank right now. Oh, it's in the fight, nice shots there. Mm -hmm. Picking off smart. Absolutely. I will point out here that both comps do have enough bombs to very easily stall power. All the, both comps, they're actually the exact same weapons, other than one scope versus one scope charger. Um, but all of the weapons have lethal bombs, which are so good at selling power. I don't recall if they were running a lot of last ditch effort, but if they are, it makes sense because it allows you in desperate situations, like where if a team is pushed to 29, to have way more ink efficiency 
And that is that vacuum coming out once again, trying to just stall out that tower to get that checkpoint. Although they do get stopped, they get forced to get off the tower. And the Fluttershot here trying to make something happen, not quite able to, does manage to get the trade. A Snork is painting up in mid here, just forcing a lot of pain and pressure onto this machine. And that trade was actually really important, trying to keep the enemy forces down. A bubbler is available. That's going to allow a tactic here to start moving in. I wonder if they're going to, how long they're going to hold this for. Got to make sure the flank's covered again here. It's, again, the Hagglefish mid, it will keep you humble. If you're not careful, if you don't check that flank, someone will make it across in two seconds and mess up your team. Something I would like to point out here is that Tactic Crew is probably going to want to build up that Booyah Bomb on the machine to get to retake tower very easily. Although they might not need to since Sunset Shores is three down. And it is just that splatter shot up in mid trying to fight for their lives, but the Junior's going to be able to at least get some chip damage in with that bomb. The machine does oh. go down, but they do get traded. And it is the Junior on tower, and now it is Pepe, and they managed to take that game. Wow. <laughs> Absolutely crazy stuff there. I mean, that last ditch effort from that spot and top player was fantastic. Tactic Crew looking good right now. 2 0. Yeah. Sitting pretty, winning their fights and making some good trades. The uses of specials, mm -hmm. trading specials, trading players. And that's all you can ask for out of a competitive team. If they can hit those things, they'll, they're going to win a lot of those fights. Yeah. One thing I would like to point out is how strong vacuum can be in just about every mode in the game right now because it can. It can completely destroy specials like Booyah Bomb. It can destroy Tri-Strike to some degree. It can get a lot of power off of them. It doesn't take them out of the air, though. Uh, it can take missiles out of the air if you look directly up at them when they're shot at you. Um, it can neutral a lot. Of, it can neutralize a lot of other specials, which means that the enemy team specials just go to waste at the cost of your one special, and you can preserve your others, which is uh, very powerful. And then one of the only ways to really counter is A, another ink vac, or B, to flank that player. If you can get around that player, you're kind of slow to turn with mm -hmm. the ink vac, but um, do you think the enemy team's really going to let you just stroll on up and kill the ink vac player? Another and thing that can actually deal with ink vac pretty well is Killer Whale, because ink vac has such limited movement that Killer Whale forces them to just waste their duration. Um, Killer Whale also deals with the Crab Tank special very, very well, very along, well. along with Wave Breaker, uh, because Crab just doesn't have mobility. It just doesn't. It tries its best. Flashers are also very strong against it, which is neat. Yeah, which is really neat. Yeah, Crab Tank, for those of you who don't know, when you're on that tank, uh, not only is your head completely exposed and you can be taken out by a nice charger shot, but also um, you... you literally exists on the back of that tank. So sloshers, any weapons like rollers that can mm -hmm. kind of fire over walls pretty Rushes easily. Rushes apparently deal really, really well with it from what I've heard from Bush players. But they also have to get close enough, which tends to be the issue. If the tank player positions well, that can be pretty difficult. I will say if it's a good enough ink rush player, it, it's not that hard for them. Octobrush has a much harder time with it. Oh yeah, ink brush will just run. Ink brush just, doesn't care. They just go wherever they want, any day of the week. They can just go anywhere. And especially now that they have, like, this is the best ink brush kit that's ever. probably existed in the games. Yeah. I think ever, yeah. Its synergy is just wild. It has so much synergy. <laughs> it is a very, very wild kit. I uh, I have an ink rush player on my team. It is, they are very happy with the kit. <laughs> I mean, Killer Whale on, on a weapon like that is so strong. It lets them decide when they want to engage engage with it. You can make plays around it. It's lovely. And here we are going to Scorch Gorge Rage Maker. As we were talking about earlier, there are many ways to push in on this map. And a what? lot of... That is... Okay. That's, so that's a lot of ends. I see you, Tactic Crew. You're using the Tactic Cooler. I see it. Do you, uh, think, do you think they're going to get a Tactic Cooler in this I game? I think they might get a Tactic Cooler in this game. Wow. Um, I do think that with that amount of bombs and that amount of LDE, that Sunset Shores is going to have a hard time. Zap is also just such a well-rounded weapon that it can just kind of get away with... They can get away with it. Um... There are not many weapons that I'm like, yeah, in theory, that's you. They do already have a Tacticooler on, by the way. Uh, that's what those arrows by the mean. Tacticooler gives you um, an obscene amount of stat boost. Um, it's not as strong as you would think it is, but it is very strong. Yeah, and, and the biggest of those being, of course, when you die, you don't lose any special that you've charged up. So it'll help players maintain their special as they're trying to build them. And, and you of also respawn. You respawn way faster. Um, <laughs> however, uh, there is one counter to it called uh, Respawn Punisher, and that'll make your day a little less good. But it's... Sunset Source isn't running that, though. Yeah, no, they're running... <laughs> They're running the normal abilities because they didn't expect quad tactical. No, no one expects quad. <laughs> no one expects four end zaps in the tournament match. I mean, from the team name Tactic Cream, I should have expect expected it at some point. Yeah, but not. You know what? I didn't see game one. I didn't see game two. So it was out of well, my. Well, they got to go for it game three. They don't know if they're going to have another. They've been winning. This is the most logical point. You're you're correct. <laughs>
And uh, I was actually a little shocked to not see anything with more range. Dually Squelcher being the longest range weapon in, in this game right now. Unfortunately, two players from Sunset Shores down three now. Here's the last one. That's going to be a wipe if they can find it. Oh, okay, there's a pseudo wipe, pseudo wipe. Yes. And we are seeing Tactic Crew moving back into mid here, popping, the, <laughs> popping another Tactic Crew. I do expect to see one of them flanking through those grates because they do have that extra run speed from, tac from Tacticooler from G getting their juice. That G Fuel sponsorship hits different. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> There's and so much. An extra note here about Tacticooler is they are, they don't break. They're and they do up. act as shields. Um, so you can use them very defensively, which is interesting. Hey, you can you can block grenades with them. Like you can block shots with them. <laughs> you you can block almost anything in this game with it. I can't think of anything you can't block unless they shoot over it. <laughs> Once again, it's not as strong as people thought it would be, but it is still strong. We That's were very worried about it during this spot fest, though. Oh, for sure. Sunset Shores, though. This is a pretty good push right now. Two players down on Tactic Crew, two down on Sunset Shores. This is hard. They do manage to take out the Rainmaker, but they are they, they have not managed they do manage to get the wipe out there. Um, I will say that they are that it's likely that Tactic Crew is over relying on that quick respawn and probably getting punished to some degree for it. Because while you while it's great to have, you still need to be able to jump in. You still need to be able to get back into mid easily. And that's not necessarily possible if everyone's dying while they have time to hold. Right, exactly. And then you, and you don't get necessarily another tactic cooler in that amount of time. So then you're not refreshing that buff, and then you're just four end zaps, which isn't necessarily the worst thing I've ever heard of. It's but, not the best. But it's not the best. Especially when there's machines and <laughs> dually sculptures. Absolutely. And we are seeing the Rainmaker managing to take out Dio there, who has been on Charger before this. Uh, and oh another my. pick from the Rainmaker. Rainmaker only has 16 seconds left, though, so they need to try and make this push quickly if they want to get more points on the board. They only managed to get eight more on the board as the Zaps do manage to stop them. I am just referring to them as the Zaps the Collective right now, um, because it is just a group of Zaps in my brain right now. It is just a group of Zaps, and not only that, but three of them were down for a moment there. And Sunset Shores has Rainmaker again and gets more points on the board. I mean, there's this, I mean, clearly they're paying for the meme right now. They Sunset are. Shores is getting everything they want out of this match so far. And I'm happy to see it, honestly. Absolutely. Look, I don't have any issue with people doing this, playing for the meme. <laughs> I think it's fun. I think it's fun for commentators. On the other hand, if you do it, you know the risk you're taking. Like, that's why they didn't do it until they had they were in game three, and they knew that they would have more games cool. they could take. And I will say, if there is a mode to do it in, it is Rainmaker. I think you get the most benefit out of it in Rainmaker, because you do get that movement speed on the Rainmaker. Um, good movement there from Smork, actually. Really good Rainmaker movement, um, allowing them to stay alive. They do manage to get this checkpoint. There are 56 seconds left. They could still take this game. I'm going to be honest. It's not undoable. They do have another tactical already. And I don't think I've heard it come out yet because it does make a fun little chime. Yeah, and I, and I think that that's the, uh, the the right play, right? It's like Rainmaker is still a mode that's very sweet. Even with the checkpoints, it can still quickly turn to someone else's favor. And like even now, it's getting reset. This might be Tactic Crew just picking it up immediately and making another play with it. Especially as those Tactic Coolers are getting popped by Tactic Crew. And that is two of them out right now. Three. Three. Just four. A few. No, there's four. There's one on the oh, left. Oh, just a there's few. <laughs> they used all of them. There's all of them. That is a little bit early on all of their special use. I'm going to be honest. Uh, good on them for surviving that bomb there. That was a hard thing to react to with how little paint they had around them. They are moving very nicely. On the other hand, they need their team to move up in front of them. There are 10 seconds left. They do go down, but it's nowhere near over. As Luigi manages to get that pick, they are able to pop Rainmaker. The, the machine is stuck flanking. They are trying to move up here. They might be able to do this if they play smart and play careful. Dio have did a really good job covering that, uh, that flank. And now Pepe's just firing off into that top right corner. They have plenty of time with the Rainmaker, but... And that is a Trizuka just taking it out. Trizuka will one-tap you. So. It absolutely will. <laughs> Trizuka and Inkjet are kind of the sleeper things for dealing with Rainmaker pushes to me. Because people don't expect them to, but they can just one-shot the Rainmaker if you have those specials ready. It's not like it's not as strong as like Ray in Splatoon 2 was by any means, but Inkjet's always been a solid option for dealing with a panic Rainmaker moment, in my opinion. And someone who's good with Inkjet. Jet. Yeah, they're terrifying. They You're just, gonna hit the shot. They'll take out your whole team, and you'll be like, "Wow, damn, you really did me like that." Okay. Wow, you did that to me. Oh, uh, right. why? I'm gonna cry a little now. Thanks. But also, the good news for Sunset Shores, this gives them a little bit of mm -hmm. life, right? Like, hey, you're still in it. You're 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 fine. They kind of memed on you, but you 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 handled it. But you handled well. the meme. Yep. And honestly, like when somebody hits you with the meme and you handle it well, like you know that like a, a weaker player would have faltered. So yeah, it's absolutely. like okay, you kept it together. How are you gonna do on Clam Blitz Mince Me? And this is the this stalemate. Is a, this is a stalemate stage. I have been playing it in scrims a decent bit, and oh my god, it, it's not uncommon for it to go 
to just to clam in overtime. So for any of you who are new to this game, Mincemeat has a very blocked off spawn area. And the only real way in is both mids have a catwalk made of crates that meet at the middle. And you have to climb on either the enemy's block that's solid or your block and then walk across the grates into their base where it is. So you can't swim, you can't dash, you can't do anything to go faster unless you're a dually player <laughs> and uh, or a brush player. And you're yeah. just, your te whole team, so if you like throw the ball, congratulations, you got 20 points, that's probably it. It like, can be, but it, you never want to rely on that in Clam Blitz mm -hmm. because it gives them a free pity Clam and it can allow them to make a counter push so easily if you get wiped. Yeah, and they and know how to capitalize on it. If there's and if you get a big wipe on this map and you start a big play, it's hard to get them off your it's hard to get them out. And then you have to make the same play back yeah. and it's and it, it didn't get easier. No, it got harder. It got way harder. So this is a this is a really, really difficult game mode and map, but if you've studied it and you play it and you know how to move, you know that it's all about really just mm -hmm. fragging out, getting your picks, and then going in. So and again, there's a lot of places to tuck and hide in this map, too. There are. I will also say, saying that, though, Charger can reach the enemy team's plat from mid. Yep, stringers can, uh, can bombard the little cubbies, too. Mm -hmm. So if, you have a str if you're ever dealing with a stringer player in this map, it can get pretty rough. I uh, will say you're never that safe. if you have a stringer player, they're not going to like it if there's an E-leader on the other no, team. No, they're not going <laughs> to like it. <laughs> I can confirm as a stringer player. Yeah, it's, same. It it's sucks. not good. It's not good. I don't like it when they have an E-leader on this map because I can't move out of spawn eventually. If they push up far enough, I just go, ah, I have been trapped. Yeah, the, the, the only thing we can hope for is to fire from low ground over them. Exactly. And you just have to hope for the best. Oh, and that is a Nautilus. A Nautilus in the year 2022? He, so while Nautilus doesn't have as good of a kit as it did in two, it's still a Nautilus. It's still an obscenely strong main weapon. It doesn't, it didn't rely on its special anyway, and Rain gives it free chip damage. It's still a great weapon. And Ink Rain is, uh, is still a very useful special. Yes. And we are seeing the Splatter Shot already going down on the side of Tacticrude, which is surprising. We are seeing the Blaster here moving into mid, able to get some chip damage in. I do think that it is surprising to see a Blaster and Nautilus in the same comp for that exact reason. It's not too hard to flank them. They don't have the best mobility ever. And Sunset Shores, uh, Sunset Shores comp is very, very easy to move around. Tacticrude went, got folded over right there like a beach chair. They just, they just moved in and got so many points and normally this takes forever. Normally this is like a long, long play to have make happen, but getting that many points this early is a really nice place to be if you're Sunset Shores. I actually believe that we have the graphic a little bit wrong up top just looking oh. at players' names. I do believe Green is Tactic Crew. Okay. Okay. So so that was actually Tactic Crew that made that play. Yes, Tactic Crew is pink here and we have Sunset Shores in green. So just okay. keep that in mind. Well um, then well then Tactic Crew then return to perform, right? Yes, no longer absolutely. memeing. Absolutely. In they are playing dangerous. weapons they are comfortable with and that makes more sense with the weapons we're seeing, um, because I wouldn't be surprised to see Quartz Mark on anything other than Junior. That's what they play. They're a Junior main. I have never seen them on another weapon. I'm sure they play other weapons, but I have not seen it. Nice to see the machine. They're using that this way call to get their teammate over there, although it does get their teammate killed a little bit. Uh, that's how it goes sometimes. Uh, we are seeing that big bubbler coming out from the blaster. Um, trying to apply pressure. Machine managing to get a pick there as Sunset Shores is trying to find a way in, but not quite able to yet, as the E-Leader is keeping an eye on everything. Like we said, E-Leader is very strong on a stage like this. They apply a ton of pressure, and especially an unscoped variant like that where they can reposition so much. Although the Nautilus does manage to take them out, they got two picks first. That was a really good play with the Nautilus. Unfortunately, going to be going down there immediately. And this is a bit more of what I expect out of Mincemeat, right? Yes. This is that you're constantly fighting a mid. You need a real full wipe to make something happen. And actually, right now is a bit There's of that opportunity. There's an up. Yep. If the E-Leader hits their shots, they can't get in, even if they're whale. Like, E-Leader is just, don't get me wrong, it's not overpowered on this map by any means, but it is strong enough to make it hard, especially with those greats, because they have a clear sight line. Uh, there it is. Yeah. The, like, like we, we read the script. Yeah. Like, it just... It's it, me. And, and you have to have, like, a wall or something, right, to really push it. And they did have a wall, but it was kind of angled um, incorrectly, and uh, it didn't really provide much cover. I will say that people can push in through right. It is also very challenging. But right is a path option. Uh, it's not consistent or reliable, but neither path is. So like it's up to the individual player. Charger does go down there, not able to quite get what they want out of it because of that Trizuka. But the Junior's up with that big bubbler, which can give their team free jumps into mid. So, you know, they're not using it. But that is an option. Uh, big bubbler, if you don't know, also acts as a beacon, which is really, really neat. 
as you can see, there is a lot of neutral time in this game, a lot of just trying to find the opportunities you need, um, because this map is very, very finicky. Yeah, again, it's this it's getting through this mid, right? You have to climb on either your side or the opponent's side, which either makes for way too safe of a play and an E-leader's sights are right on you, or really aggressive play that has an ultra-high risk with a reward that's worth it, but E can just die so easily there. I will also point out that this E-leader and Junior uh, understand that they don't need to be super aggressive right now. They understand that they have a decent lead. 60 is strong enough that they need either two power clams, which is a total of 16 clams, or they need eight. Uh, I can't, that's a lot of math. <laughs> I give up. Um, but they need a, de a decent <laughs> amount of clams. It was easier in two when it was, no, it don't was worry. 10 I, clams for a power clam. I couldn't do the math either, I, I promise you. <laughs> You're not alone on that one. I'll get used to Splatoon 3 clam now. I'll learn it. I'm just still used to Splatoon 2 clam now for now. Uh, Junior popping that bubbler there, allowing them to hold this bridge. One of the few things that can allow them to. Bubbler allowing them to, not bubbler. Oh yeah, allowing them to get in there. And although they go down, the rest of their teammates are still up at that 52 is there, denying them that access. E-Leader watching them from mid. If it had been a faster weapon than the E-Leader, that might have been more achievable. As you can see, the slaughter shot trying to do it there. A Duelies could have done, probably handled that situation and at least got it in. But in this situation, Tactico really doesn't want to just get a singular clan. They have enough of a lead that that, and enough penalty points that that would not benefit them. Yeah, realistically, you have to have your whole team there ready with clams. And, uh, but having that aggressive of a push, of course, further pushes Sunset Shores backwards. And now Good shot from the E-Leader there. Yeah, that was a beautiful shot. And Sunset Shores has got to make something happen soon, and that's hard because I, oh, they're just they're going down left and right. Look at this again and again. And now they don't have any clams, and there's only 10 seconds left. They don't have a pity. Nautilus trying to find picks, but picks aren't going to help them here. They need they need clams, and they don't have them. This game is going to Tacticrew, and that will be the set. Yeah. Really <laughs> great play out of Tacticrew there, aside from doing a little memeing as a tree. <laughs> as a tree, you know, for the road. 3-1, very, very strong stuff, and of course... Their, their general compositions were great. That junior <laughs> player was fantastic. Yes. You were coming. Like, not that I didn't believe you, but they proved it. They really showed, like, I, yeah, this I, is why I'm good. I know my junior players. I, I was a junior one trick for um, most of S2, most of Splatoon 2. Um, and junior players tend to keep track of other junior players.